Hey guys, I'm Janko Arik from the DNF team and I'm excited to show you our new package manager, DNF5, and what our team has been working hard on so far. So first, uh, let's look at the brief performance comparison with the previous version of the package manager, DNF4. So let's start by downloading package metadata for DNF4 by running DNF4 make cache and wait until it's downloaded. Okay, and now download the metadata for the new DF, for the new default DNF5 package manager, which is now used by the DNF command. And you should see it's a bit faster than DNF4 because repository parsing and loading are done uh, concurrently with the metadata download. Now that we have the metadata prepared, uh, we can try running some simple repo query command which is what basically lists all available packages in the connected repositories. And we'll measure the computation time of this command uh, first with DNF4. Okay, nice. And now let's drop the output so we are comparing just the computation time. And now let's try it with DNF5. And you can see it's now more than three times faster. The improvement is even more significant when parsing many command line arguments or resolving globs uh, expressions or finding dependent packages. Another thing uh, that has, has seen improvements is bash autocompletion. So let's type DNF and hit tab tab to see all the commands we can use along with some brief descriptions. When you start typing, uh, say M, and again hit tap tap, you can see the suggestions are narrowed down. We can also list all subcommands available for a specific command. Uh, for example, typing the mark command and hitting tap tap shows the package reasons uh, subcommands we can use for marking packages. After that, hitting tap tap again gives us a list of installed packages we could pass to the command. So let's try marking the bash package as user install. Oh, oops, uh, we don't have enough privileges. Okay, this is a new behavior compared to DNF4 uh, as we now try to consistently inform users about the required privileges before executing a command. And you can also see how parameters for the install command are auto-completed. A great source of information and examples are, of course, the main pages. These are now structured in a more modular way, with only brief info about commands on the main page, descriptions of all global options and behavior, and specific details on their individual main pages referenced at the bottom. So let's look, for example, at the DNF install main page. You'll see a detailed description, all the parameters you can pass, examples, and related main pages wherein, where you can find more about DNF specs definitions or check the main page for the DNF5 configuration file. One of the new features in DNF5 is the DNF5 daemon, a standalone debug service that can be used for client-server communication. So this approach is currently being implemented in GNOME software, which we hope will use the new mechanism in the next Fedora version. So let's install the daemon package and try a simple demo. Okay, the package is installed now. We need to start the service before any communication can happen using a standard systemctl command. And now we can check if the service is running properly. Okay, nice. So how we can communicate with the DNF5 daemon? Let's check the documentation by going to our upstream DNF5 documentation. In the DNF5 daemon section, you'll find information or starting the service 
as well as the DBus API documentation. Let's look at that. Suppose we want to query some information about configured repositories on the system. So we search for repo related functions. And here we can see the list method and the name of the DBus interface that provides this functionality. One easy way to create a DBus client is using Python. And I have a pre-prepared script for this purpose. So let's look inside. When communicating with the daemon server, we always need to create a user session first, which is then used for further communication and storing metadata info. So we fetch the right interface, uh, use the session manager and open the session. This creates a special namespace or like an object that we will use for further communication. We'll connect to the repo interface and call the list method and simply print all the repository IDs defined in the system. Finally, we close the session. And running this script in Python outputs the repositories. Next, uh, let's look at using the DNA5 API in different scripting languages. The best support is currently for Python and everything I'm showing here is also documented in our upstream documentation with examples. So first uh, we create a base object which holds all information across the script. We load the system configuration and call the setup method which performs various initializations based on the configuration data. Since we want to work with repositories, we initialize and load them into our script. Now we can perform some queries. So for instance, well, we can search for all packages starting with uh, SSSD using this glob pattern and restricting the query to available packages only. And at the end, we simply output the found packages. So let's run it. And here is the list. Besides Python, we also have a functional state for Ruby and panel bindings. So if you want to use DNA5 in a Ruby script, you would first install the DNA5 Ruby bindings. So let's search for them by looking for DNA5 and Ruby. There are some packages uh, in the output and we'll use the DNA5 bindings. Now I'll write the same code as in the Python script, just rewritten in Ruby. You'll see that the script is quite similar, though Python handles some syntax like iterators a bit more cleanly in our implementation. And running it gives the same result. And finally, let's try Perl. Here's the Perl script doing the same job. And when we run it, we get the same output. Another new feature in the NF5 is support for dropping configuration directories. Uh, you can find uh, where DNF5 looks for configuration files in the upstream documentation. This approach allows users and distributions to override default configuration values in a predictable way. And it applies to repository configuration as well. Now let's look at extending DNF5's functionality by implementing new plugins. So DNF5 supports two types of plugins. DNF plugins, which add new commands, and libdnf5 plugins, which introduce additional logic into the library uh, via hooks. So you can like register a plugin to the pre-transaction hook, for example, and add some custom logic that executes before every transaction. For both types, there's a tutorial that guides you through writing, building, and deploying the plugin. Templates are also provided, so you don't have to start from scratch. And here is an example of a specific libdnf5 plugin included in the new dnf5 package manager called the Actions plugin. It allows you to define 
actions for specific hooks in the DNF5 workflow using a plain text file with a simple syntax. Uh, so let's install the plugin. Uh, then copy a prepared action file into the directory where the actions plugin checks for files during the workflow. And looking inside, uh, each line specifies an action to execute when using DNF5. The line always starts with a callback name, defining when it will run, followed by some options in columns like filters, package filters, and it always ends with the most important part with the command to execute. So for example, we'll append a separator and date to a log file at prebase setup and log that the postbase setup was called. Then when the repository's configured hook is triggered, we'll lock the repositories and their enabled states. And lastly, if the transaction is part of the command, we'll log the package info before its execution. So let's try running a DNF command like installing nudoku. Then check the log file. And here it is, timestamps, repositories, and package info. And for more info about the action plugin, see the upstream docs for detailed configurations and examples. And at the end, I want to just briefly show that DNF5 is a pretty lightweight package. So I will create an empty install route, and then I will create a transaction to install there first the micro DNF package, which was like the official lightweight version of DNF4 before DNF5 was introduced. And then I will do the same with DNF5 and DNF4, and we can compare the resulting size of the installed packages. So I will create an empty folder. And now I have prepared the command to install the micro DNF package, which although is already obsoleted by DNF5, it's still present in Fedora 41. So we will use our empty install root folder and we will also don't care here about any weak dependencies. <clears throat> so let's resolve the transaction. And we can see the micro DNF with all dependencies will have around 37 megabytes. And now let's pass the DNF instead, which means the DNF5 package in Fedora 41. And see, it's almost the same size, like 38 megabytes, although it's a fully fledged package manager compared to the micro DNF. And at last, we'll try the package providing the DNF4. And you can see this is 56 megabyte of size, probably mainly due to the Python stack and related packages. And that's all I've prepared. So I hope you enjoy your experience with the new DNF5 package manager and everything else that's coming in Fedora 41.